This box has been sealed for over 50 years, although some of its contents have been public knowledge since 1886. The rest has remained an intriguing and all speculated upon mystery. It is time for the box to be opened. cases of Sherlock Holmes, the world's first consulting detective, have been read the world over. Since his first public appearance in print, there has been scarcely a generation or nationality that has not fallen under the Holmes spell. He was perhaps the greatest Englishman of his day, and his worldwide popularity brought to the various corners of the earth the mental picture of the Victorian gentleman with his sense of justice, of honor, of fair play. A picture not always in keeping with prevailing political attitudes. But Sherlock always had his fans among the great and near great. On the road to Baker Street. Lesser Sherlockians gather in clubs to pay homage to Holmes. Meetings such as this one of the Baker Street Irregulars are closed to the prying eye of the reporter but their number is legion, with congregations throughout the world. Not all Holmes fans take the great detective as reverently as the Baker Street Irregulars. His figure has been borrowed by Madison Avenue to sell everything from whiskey to insurance. Cartoonists have continually libeled Sherlock's memory. And the movies, from the slapstick days of Max Sennett, to the more sophisticated films of Clive Brook. My name is Holmes, Sherlock. Have lampooned the detective without mercy. <laughs> On the whole, however, the movie makers have treated Holmes rather well. Excellent actors such as John Barrymore, Arthur Wuntner, Holmes, you're marvelous. Oh, elementary, my dear Watson. Elementary. And of course, Basil Rathbone. I am Sherlock Holmes. I know everything. We're always identified with Holmes on the screen. There have been more than a hundred films, 60 published stories by Arthur Conan Doyle, stories actually written by Holmes' friend and biographer, Dr. John Watson. Countless plays, books, and articles concerning the detective's life and times. One might easily believe the subject exhausted. Yet there remains, sealed in this box by Watson himself, a wealth of hitherto suppressed materials. The archives of Sherlock Holmes, unpublished memoirs by Dr. Watson. I can hardly wait. I'm sure I shall find out all sorts of fascinating things about the case that I never knew before. Just what do you mean by that? Oh, come now, Watson, you must admit you have a tendency to over-romanticize. You've taken my simple exercises in logic and embellished them, embroidered them, exaggerated them. I deny them. the accusation. You have described me as six foot four, whereas I am barely six foot one. A bit of poetic life. You saddled me with this improbable costume, which the public now expects me to wear. That is not my doing. Blame it on the illustrator. You've made me out to be a violin virtuoso. There's an invitation from the Liverpool Symphony to appear as soloist in the Mendelssohn Concerto. Really? The fact is, I could barely hold my own in the pit orchestra of a second-rate music hall. The man responsible for finding and opening the archives is the famous film director and homesophiliac, Billy Wilder. Wilder, with co-conspirator I.A.L. Diamond, has brought several of these cases to the screen under the title, The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes. A series of new, or rather unpublished, Holmes adventures in a new motion picture requires a new actor to portray Sherlock on the screen. An actor whose stature and ability allows him to follow in the footsteps of the other distinguished thespians who have played the role. Such an actor is Robert Stevens, a co-director with Laurence Olivier of Britain's National Theatre Company. And now... Ah, yes. Sherlock Holmes. We have been following your exploits with great interest. 
Thank you, ma'am. Are you engaged in one of your fascinating cases at the moment? In a manner of speaking, ma'am. When can we expect to read Dr. Watson's account of the case? I hope never, ma'am. It has not been one of my more successful endeavors. The contents of the archives have been speculated upon for years. Only now can they be revealed. Sherlock Holmes' battle with the Loch Ness Monster. The adventures of the dumbfounded detective. Hand me some pebbles. Pebbles? Take a look at their faces. Boys with the faces of old men. Old familiar friends are here as well. Inspector Lestrade of Scotland Yard, Mrs. Hudson. Mycroft Holmes, and there is Dr. Watson, of course. A younger, gayer Watson than we have known, but still in all, the same old Watson. And there are many new faces, endearing and endangering. Two among them are not only new to Holmes fans, but are bound to send a shockwave through their midst. For decades, it has been believed that only one woman was involved in Sherlock's life, Irene Adler. And now the archives reveal two additions. The continental beauty known only as Gabrielle. Oh, I be. <laughs> and the prima ballerina Petrova. Oh, Madame. Madame says you are shorter than she thought. Oh, I didn't mean to be. There are those among you who may scoff. There are no archives of Sherlock Holmes, you say. Or worse yet, there is no Sherlock Holmes. He is but a literary invention. On both counts, you are wrong. From the black box containing Watson's legacy, has come a new Holmes, a Holmes once again alive and well and living on Baker Street. <laughs>